Yeah, it's right here, that little boy. I never say that in real life. I never say that little boy. I don't know why that's coming out. Welcome back, welcome back. This is my stream attempt number two. Just finished working out. So I'm gonna have my little purple drink and I got a laptop to fix. I'm actually gonna make a YouTube video out of repairing this laptop here that's got a heatsink problem. I got comments to reply to. I got everything to do. Fun fact, there is no green screen at all behind me. Isn't that cool? Like reach into the abyss. That's the power of AI, baby. Hands over here, right? My hands are over here, but how come I am, whoa. Adjusting the camera, my hands are up. It's amazing. Today's video, we've got a Dell XPS laptop. It's like from 2010-ish. The heatsink is suspicious. I replaced the thermal paste a while ago and yeah. When your laptop overheats, it may turn off, it may run slow, it just gets hot. Most laptops generally running on idle. 40 to 60 Celsius idle is like a good range. Desktops, for example, when they're running idle, maybe 35, maybe 40, something like that, because they have more cooling. This particular system is spiking up to 90 degrees Celsius, which is much warmer than what you want it to be doing during idle. When they overheat like that, there's a couple of reasons. It can either be clogged fans, which I know this one does not have, uh, faulty heatsink, faulty chip, uh, just general environment, not letting it air out and everything. Today, what I plan on doing is replacing the heatsink. When it comes to re requiring parts to be replaced, the only source of these really is on eBay. And when you buy something on eBay, you trust that it's gonna be the condition that they say, which is maybe used, maybe new. This particular XPS model right here has the part number right there. So the DPN, that's Dell part number, it's a 0WCX2D as in David. You just cross-reference that on eBay, and that will get you the same part in theory, and this looks like it's gonna be the same part, and it matches. This one was supposed to be new, but by new, I think they mean system pull. Uh, this particular heatsink right here is extremely thin, as you can see, and it has these dual chambers right here that allow the heat to be transferred from the heat sink through the radiator fins, and then these fans blow out the heat from there. This does have some bend in here, but this doesn't have any uh, like gases in it or anything. It's just literally a copper overlay. So that being bent shouldn't be a problem for this repair. I'm going to need just a Phillips head screwdriver for this one. I'm just going to use the back side of the case here and I'm gonna put the screws that we take off over here as needed. Looking at this, I would say that there is one, two, three, three screws that are removable from the fans. And then there's four screws that are held in place on the heatsink itself. Oh, don't tell me that I got to take out more. I might have to take out more, oh boy. All right, which means I might need to zoom in so you guys can see a little bit more. Because there's probably gonna be a screw. Yeah, it's right here, that little boy. I never say that in real life. I never say that little boy. I don't know why that's coming out. Our third screw is gonna be right under here. And this screw itself might actually be holding it in place. And this is just gonna be a metal covering that holds down the Wi-Fi antenna probably, yep. And then this is probably the digitizer for the touch screen. I'm just gonna undo these other four screws. When you're putting them on, you wanna do it in a cross pattern. When you're taking it off, it doesn't really matter. I should be able to get this repair done in hopefully no time at all. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a pull here to see if I can get clearance over here or if I have to take any of this stuff out. Okay, there's a piece of tape right over here. I haven't listened to the radio in my car in so long. It's absurd. All right, okay, so there's just a little bit of adhesive on this digitizer cable, and that allows this to come free. There's some more adhesive right over here that you can't see. Call it movie magic. And that will come right out. Okay, we're gonna have a fan lead right here and then a fan lead right there. 
So both of those need to come out and they're just gonna pull opposite of your direction if you have the laptop in the same position I'm at. You can grab onto the cable gently, use even force, just pulls right out, there you go. So that allows this heatsink to come right out. Seems like it's in good condition, not broken or anything like that. The thermal paste is extremely fresh. All right, paper towel. Then with the paper towel, we just wipe off the excessive heat sink or the excessive uh, thermal paste. Gently wiping that up, you just get the majority of it this way. And then when you get the majority of it off, you get your isopropyl alcohol, dab that on there. I'm a professional, so as dangerous as it looks, it's more dangerous than that. Oh, see, so you can see a little bit. That's how clean it already is. So just clean it up the best you can. The problem with these Dells, these XPSs specifically, is they are extremely, extremely thin. And in the ever-growing chase of beautification of electronics, they have to make them so small that it reduces the heat reduction ability. Because you always have to, you want to have a bigger surface area to be able to cool these things. You don't always get that, uh, yeah, that luxury in these really, really thin laptops. This at least has two fans, though. I'm really happy to see this has two fans. That's really, that at least will be a benefit. So let's see, line this up just like that. That looks cool. I like the way that looks. That should be good. So nice and cleaned off. I've got some, let's see, Corsair XTM 50 thermal paste here. We're just gonna put some dabs in a line on each of those things. So not a lot of thermal paste, not a lot is necessary. It's a very small application. Make sure you have your correct heat sink, which actually I'm gonna just use some isopropyl on this real quick. Just make it nice and clean because I don't trust the job that the vendor did in cleaning this. But you gotta be extremely careful cleaning the isopropyl alcohol off of the copper heat sink. Because if you bend it, you dent it or anything like that, it doesn't take much and then you're not able to transfer the gas between to cool the actual components. Okay. There we go. That should be nice and set. And then we just do the practically what we just did in reverse. Super easy. Once you make contact with the heatsink down onto the actual chip, you want to try to not lift it up because that can introduce air bubbles and prohibit the cooling as nice as it can be. And we're just going to set this pretty much right there. We've got some additional chips over here that get cooled on this right section. And those shouldn't really be too much of a problem. And then you want to see, do you want to plug the fans in before or after? As long as you have proper clearance, plugging the fans in after is not a big deal. But sometimes when you have to lay the cabling, it doesn't let you move it enough to be able to plug the fan in. But in this situation, we should be just fine. Got to go on the left. So Got to come in, lead from the left here, because you want this post. You want this post right here to line up with this under here. And this went underneath this digitizer cable. So we got to lead into there first. And try not to unplug the digitizer cable, because that just leads into more problems. We have access to the fans. And then we're just going to go ahead and gently... Apply pressure with that, get our screwdriver, and completely miss everything that is happening because my big hands are in the way. All right. It's not making connection. Hold on. Let's try this one. Did we get it? Yep, we got this one. Okay. I'm applying gentle pressure to just keep it still, but you don't want to bend it. You bend it and game over. Okay, so I started with the bottom right, then I'm going to the top left, gonna to go to the bottom left, and then go to the top right. So that way, it's that crisscross pattern, and it's nice and on and secured. Make sure this thermal pad is making connection over there with that tape. And then that's pretty much set. That's all we need. Just gonna go ahead and plug in that fan. Just line it up, and it just goes straight in. 
A lot of times there's different little tools you can use. Like this is a little uh, spudger sort of a tool. They can help you push things in if your fingers aren't confident in doing it. And then over here, we just had the tape that holds that in place. And then we had this additional screw that goes over this metal bracket here. And that's just gonna line up. Looks like there's gonna be a hole and it's gonna line up right there. Wish my camera could zoom in more. I am tapped at the zoom. Use the screw that went with that. The other screw for the fan. And then the final screw for the uh, other fan bracket, and then that's all there was to it. Now, this is a more personal laptop, so I am unable to show the boot up process to it, but I am going to turn it on and then go into the temperature test to see how that goes. Computer's on, I just wanna see if the fans are gonna spin here. The fans usually only spin when the heat determines that it needs to spin. Sometimes there's a setting in the BIOS. Does that have a dent? Oh my goodness, there might be a dent in that heatsink. That is the quarrels of buying things on eBay. I'll be able to know pretty quickly. Hardware monitor is on. Core temperature is 45 degrees Celsius right now, 52 degrees Celsius at a max. That was that exact range that I was talking about between 40 and 60 degrees on idle. So that's fantastic. The fans haven't even spun yet. It's not too warm to the touch. So that would give me the indication to believe that the previous heatsink was definitely defective in some way, unable to keep the component cool. 42 Celsius, not bad, not bad. Next, I'll go ahead and put it back together when I'm all done. I mean, look at those temps, 39 degrees Celsius. That's awesome, it's so awesome. I love seeing that it's that much lower. If you see this on YouTube, drop that subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining on in. My name is Ben the Don, this has been the Don Tech. I'll see you in the next video and stream. And remember, the Don's got your back.